how to diagnose patients with gum disease. Um, there's been a lot of questions about this on different dental forums, so I thought it would be a good idea to kind of go through all the details. So if you want to look at uh, gum disease, you go between several stages. So usually you will have uh, healthy um, gingivum or healthy gums where you don't have any bone loss. We diagnose gum disease with x-rays and we're going to check for bone loss. Um, and patients who are healthy, they don't have inflamed uh, uh, gums and they don't have any bone loss or really subgingival or supergingival calculus. Now, the next stage would be patients who have gingivitis and they will have inflamed gums. Uh, sometimes, uh, um, you know, it could be localized or it could be generalized. They usually have a little bit of deeper pocket depths, usually somewhere between maybe three, four millimeters versus the healthy patients may have uh, three or less. So these patients will have more uh, bleeding gums, but you still don't see any bone loss on the x-ray. And then you're going to cross into gum disease uh, area if this, uh, this is not addressed here and the patient still has poor hygiene and, um, or they have the genetic predis predisposition for gum disease. Then you're going to get into the area where you're going to start seeing bone loss um, on the x-ray and then the patient is diagnosed with uh, gum disease and uh, you're going to see inflamed gums. Sometimes you see uh, super or subgingival calculus as well on the x-ray as well as clinically. And usually we break this into three categories, which could be mild, moderate, and severe. And uh, sometimes they call it early, moderate, and advanced. Um, I usually just call it mild, moderate, and severe. And in the mild cases, you just see some either localized or generalized bone loss, uh, maybe about a millimeter or so. <clears throat> the pockets tend to be more about five millimeters. And then if it keeps advancing, then you're going to cross into the moderate uh, uh, gum disease where you see more bone loss here you're going to see more like two three millimeters of bone loss and you're going to see pockets there are uh, six millimeters or more and that if that still keeps advancing then you're going to get into advanced uh, or severe periodontitis where you see pretty severe bone loss about four or five plus millimeters and you see pockets there are really really deep uh, more than uh, six millimeters you also a lot of times see uh, mobility with these teeth and you can have either you can have generalized gum disease or you can have localized gum disease so it could be like just in certain spots so that could be localized or it could be throughout the whole mouth which would be generalized and the same is true with gingivitis so this is kind of like the progression of gum disease you go from healthy to gingivitis to mild moderate severe uh, gum disease and like I said, you diagnose uh, gum disease from bone loss, so you need to take x-rays and diagnose this. Now, how do we treat these patients? So I did a flow chart that kind of makes it a little bit easier to follow. So your patients may come in, and they come in for either a hygiene exam or they come in for an emergency. And what you're going to take is, of course, you're going to take x-rays, you're going to do some period charting, and then you're going to break down um, what the you know the patient's conditions into several different categories like I have shown you here so you're gonna have patients who are healthy and those are the patients who do not have bone loss so that will be that stage and these patients don't have bone loss these patients going to get a profi either adult profi uh, this is the dental code for it in the US and this is a child profi this is a dental code in the US um, those of you who are not in the US you know these codes don't apply, but nevertheless, it will be the same process. Patients who are healthy, they don't have bone loss, they're gonna get a profi. And then they're going to get, uh, um, you know, profis usually twice a year, every six months. Now, patients who have gingivitis, they have inflammation. So that's that category. They still don't have bone loss, but they have inflammation of the gums. They have deeper pockets, about three millimeters. So these patients are, <clears throat> they are they're still going to get profis. Uh, but a lot of times to reduce this inflammation, we may put them on more frequent profis, so it could be like maybe three to four months. Uh, and the, the, the hope there would be to reduce the gingivitis, and then we still keep them in, on the profi or cleaning schedule. Now, there will be some patients who don't have bone loss, but they have very heavy su uh, super or subgingival calculus, so that's calculus that's, uh, calculus that's above or below the gum line and those patients can be difficult to examine it could be very difficult to probe as well so those patients you may decide to do what's called gross debridement this is the dental this is the code in the u.s um, but the point of the debridement is that you can do a better exam and doing better uh, period charting and then you're going to reevaluate the patient maybe like a month or two later and you're going to take x-rays again to check for bone level 
Um, if these patients have uh, bone loss, then of course we're going to get into the next category where you actually start seeing bone loss, which is going to be your early or mild periodontitis, or it could be, well, it could be early uh, or mild, moderate, or severe. So you're going to get into this area where you have some bone loss, you're going to diagnose the patient, you're going to say either uh, chronic or acute, most of these are chronic because it has been going on, so the diagnosis is going to be chronic generalize the localized so it could be just uh, uh, throughout the mouth or it could be like certain spots and then you're going to categorize it mild moderate or severe and it's periodontitis so you're going to say chronic generalized uh, mild uh, periodontitis so that could be like one diagnosis and now you have to also come up with a treatment plan for that patient so what i usually like to do is break it down into severity of it and that's going back to your chart you're going to have mild moderate and severe cases so if i see gum disease uh, based on the x-ray and based on the level of bone loss that the patient has and we're going to categorize it remember mild moderate to severe so if the patient is mild to has mild to moderate um, uh, periodontal disease then we're going to do root planing and these are the dental codes for root planing so it's going to be one to three teeth or you're going it's going to be more than four teeth so that will be a quadrant so if a patient has more like a localized uh, gum disease then it's going to be one to three teeth if it has generalized it's probably going to be a whole quadrant so we're going to do uh, scaling and root planing and then once that's done usually do it in two quadrants like one side at a time we're going to do maybe the left side and then the right side and then <clears throat> we're going to bring the patient back in for post initial uh, periodontal evaluation or pipe and that's just a reevaluation um, to see you know if they have gotten better we usually do that about four weeks later and when you did the root planing here you did full charting the best time to do that is when the patient's numb um, because otherwise they will be hurting so you're gonna do the post initial eval you're gonna do full period charting about four to six weeks after you did the root planing and then you're going to decide if a patient is okay that means they don't have uh, deep pockets or the pockets are between one to four millimeters then you're going to put the patient on period maintenance about every three to four months and that's going to be for life and this is the code for periodontal uh, maintenance and that's forever if a patient is not okay so that means they still have a lot of bleeding they have deep pockets then you're going to refer to the periodont uh, periodontist who's going to treat that patient probably with surgery and then they're going to make the patient perio maintenance and send them back to your practice so that was the mild to moderate case now if a patient has severe periodontal disease you have two options you can just either refer the patients for surgery to the periodon periodontist and they're going to do probably gum surgery because these patients have you know six seven plus millimeter uh, uh, pockets and bone loss sometimes they even have eight so they're most likely going to need period surgery by the specialist who's going to uh, treat that patient and then put them on period maintenance and send them back to your practice that's one option the second option if you don't think the patient maybe the patient refuses to go to the gum specialist that's what they need to do but um, they're willing to do the treatment in your practice that would tell them you're going to need surgery but we're going to do the root planing in our practice you can do the root planing in your practice if you wish to do that you have two options you could just plan to go to the gum specialist and not offer any treatment for the patient and that's it that's really what they need if uh, the you know if you think that the patient will do better if you do the root planning in your practice you just have to tell them this is not going to uh, probably reduce your pockets to a more acceptable range but we can do it but we're going to have to still refer you to a gum specialist most likely after we bring you back for evaluation now <clears throat> so you're going to have a serial period patient going to a periodon periodontist or you may do the root planning in your practice and then you're going to reevaluate the patient in four weeks after you did the root planing for a severe period patient and what you're going to find is that the patient pockets may be, patient's pockets maybe went from eight millimeters down to maybe a five or a six and they still not okay so they still have to go to the periodontist but here you can make the patient perio maintenance because they already have four quadrants of root planing but they need to go to the per, uh, need to go to the specialist still because they're getting they're going to need to have surgery to reduce those pockets to acceptable ranges and get a healthier um, uh, gingiva so hopefully this helps with the overall workflow of how to treat these patients uh, with gum disease and how to get them back to a healthier range uh, any questions or comments just uh, post it below this video have a good day bye